Okay, guys, a little further down the rabbit hole on the red-headed stepchild project. Getting a lot of flack for having my bull ratios so incredibly tight. 86 on the intake, 80 on the exhaust. Can't possibly work. Well, the latest I hear, this is uh, going to be cranked up to a 383, and he's thinking about a progressive nitrous controller. Okay, I kind of made a side bet, you know. I don't think he's going to want to put nitrous on it, but we'll find out. He is my kind of customer. There's always a little bit left on the table, and he wants it. So, when I say down the rabbit hole, what we did today is we tested this at two different depressions with different valves. Well, the intake valve, anyway. The exhaust valve is what we used last time. Now, this splatter you're seeing here is at 35 inches of vacuum, which is about as much as I can pull on my, my SF600 without uh, having problems with the oil squirting out. This is also a different port. Uh, as you can see, I, I forgot to finish the exhaust, but we're only doing intake today, so we'll take a look at it. As far as our splatter and so forth, not bad. Let's take a look at uh, the board. Can't, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Not a lot of splatter over on the other side of the bore. Kind of more of a big drip in the middle. Okay, the intake, I think, is <laughs> out of my bow ties when I bought them in the 90s. It's a 202, straight stem, back cut, nothing special. Uh, it was uh, swirl polished probably in the 80s for me. And you can see what we got as far as our, our splatter. We got a little bit on the other side of the valve, not much. Inside the bowl, it's a little thinner. Doesn't quite go down as deep, but you're also diff dealing with different air speeds. We're going to go over the air speeds in a bit. Okay, trying to get a view. Have it look half decent and focus is not happening on this lately. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, I gotta do a disclaimer. I went back and I started reviewing all the TPI videos. Seems I goofed up day one testing these darts completely stock with the wrong valve. I'll show you how you can tell. It may not be the easiest thing in the world to see, but the wrong valve has this strange wear mark on the stem. And it's got a bigger dish. I saw on the very first one, and it also has a, a good size uh, back cut on it. Sorry about that, guys. I have to go back and, and make a note on every video that it's being tested with the wrong valve, which completely screwed my development up, by the way. So, what, what did we do this time? We have a different port. We're on port number one. I used the 1204 hard radius because the garage is hot and clay does not feel like sticking. So, we know that the hard radius loses a few CFM. No big deal. So, this is what we got with a 202 straight stem back cut 1204, 28 inches. I should make a, mark, a, a note of that. Now, I know there are guys that do their development at, at much higher depressions, and it's I'm sure it's more accurate. It beats the bench up bad, though. Mine handles 35, no problem. But as soon as we start coming down to the higher lifts, I have to change. I can't do it anymore on uh, range 4. I have to switch up to range 5 in order to do it. So, this is what we are at right now. It's, and with the hard radius, we're normally 194.5 at 500, 272.7. After that, we lose it on the short side pretty badly because the short side speeds are really fast now with the bigger valve and the bigger bowl. Not really the bowl, the bigger throat. And even though it's still a really tight throat, it puts more across the short side and after 500 we can't you can't stay in on anymore and you separate so part of the the idea of going to the higher differential pressure is to see if it still loses it in the same place give you a better idea what it's going to do on a running engine all right we'll just take a quick look at our swirls we got 
more than enough swirl. In fact, it looks like our swirl went up since last time we looked at it. Okay, that is 2980. Almost 3000 RPM swirl at 28 inches. All right, so what do we go from here? Now, of course, all of these are going to be higher. If you want to be a wise guy, you can go on um, a site like Wallace Racing, and they have a converter. And you'll be able to tell whether it's efficiently doing it at the higher depression or we're losing something somewhere. Okay, 300 now 221. 500, we're at 302.4, but guess what? We start to lose it right after that. Now, I've heard other guys say, you know, you have to test the different depressions and then listen. Well, this port actually sounded better at 35 than it did at 28. It sounded really good when I had the 194 seat and the 202 valve. When I made it a 202 seat, didn't sound as good. And we lost efficiency on quite a bit of it, especially up top. With the small, with the smaller seat and the bigger valve, we were pulling strong pretty much through the whole curve. Now you can convert, compare these swirls, right? Now you have more depression. You would figure the swirl would probably go up, and that's pretty much what it looks like. Almost, you know, four thousand is is way high. Let's take a quick look at our air speeds in the port at 35. Now, you can go back and see another port, port number 8, and the air speeds there, how fast they are. Here, we're really cranking, okay? We're, we're 395 at the top of the, the pinch. We still have way more action at the top than the bottom. That should tell us something right there. Our roof is not nearly as even as it was. Okay, so you can tell you got changes happening there. And we're not too bad from side to side, and we are screaming fast. Remember, this apex is pretty much stock where that head was and was designed for a 194. So we have a very steep incline on our short side. Could I lay it back and get some more top end? Sure. We had a good comment on uh, on Speed Talk. The owner of these heads has, has did a thread on there, 194 versus 202. And someone you know much smarter than me is like, you've already got enough flow for a 355 at 8,000 RPM. We do, but not through that intake manifold. So, you guys can give me a little input on that. You know, how do you make the whole system as efficient as you can? Well, I think having a, a smooth intake port up to where we're going to flow, we don't know if it's going to be 500 or 600 lift. The first cam that Mike Jones spec for this was 510, but it was a 355. Now it'll be a 383. And remember, the 383 is going to pull a bigger depression than a 355 because it has more cubes the same RPM, it's going to pull a higher depression. It's one of the things you can fiddle with a little bit. Now, if you really wanted to be a wise guy, you could take 28 and then, you know, do a ratio proportion and find out exactly what it'll be. I don't know if uh, we need to do that. I think this was a good demonstration of what we got. The Ferreira valves have been purchased for this. They're going to be shipped here soon. I don't think I'm going to change anything until... I find out how the Ferreira valves act. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work on my throat ratio. A little bit on the intake and probably a lot on the exhaust if he's going to use a progressive nitrous controller. I did do an interesting thing on the exhaust. I left the page at work. I don't think I took a picture of it. Hold on, let me see if I took a picture of it. All right, I don't have that picture to show you, but you can see if we get right over that, that port how tight that port is, okay? The the angle that we have, the, the Venturi that we have. Let's take a pair of calipers and I'll show you how deep that Venturi goes. All right, guys, I got to do this one-handed. It may not be the easiest thing in the world to do, but you'll be able to tell 
All right, we're still tighter, tighter, tighter. All right, finally, let's go. We're down about almost a half an inch from our valve seat. Now, the guys that do serious RPM racing stuff, that is not where they would put it. They put it up almost at the seat. Now, I am not an expert with exhaust port venturis or anything like that. But what I did do is I took our measurement, which was 1.29, and I think I actually did the calculation at 1.3, and then you subtract the area of an 11 30 second stem, and you get what the area of that venturi is, and then you put it through the 146 fuel formula, and it tells me it should flow 169 CFM max on the bench. Let me see if I can find the last sheet that I tested this exhaust port on. Okay, I think that's it. 227.8 with a pipe. 203 without a pipe at 600. Not bad. Uh, that's quite a bit over the 169 theoretical max you can get. So we're over 100% efficiency. Now, my question to the really smart people is, will that work on a running engine? So right now what we're doing is as we're accelerating the air into this, into this bowl, it's accelerating, right? So right about here, it's at maximum acceleration. According to Bernoulli, speed the air up, your pressure drops. So at 28 inches, this part of the bowl here does not see 28 inches. It's much less than that. That's why it can flow over 100% efficiency at that point. Now, if I could measure exactly what the depression was right there, that would probably be good inf information, but I don't have that ability to do that. At least I don't know how to do that. But what I'm thinking is, since he wants to do nitrous now, this, because it's so tight, it'll get saturated and you won't be able to to blow down as readily as you'd like. I think it'll work great up to maybe 4,000 RPM, maybe even 5,000, where your TPI really shines. But if he wants to spend it to 6,000 or 6,500, especially with some nitrous, I think it's going to need more exhaust port. So give me your input on that, guys. I think, well... I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do for the rest of the day, but give me some input on these. Uh, give me your opinion, what we think, what we really need to do next. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.